Thank you, Mr Speaker. My question is to the Minister of Finance and Arts. Has he considered raising a temporary levy on income to help fund the rebuilding of Christchurch? And if so, how much could it raise? The Honourable Bill English. Mr Speaker, as I've said publicly, the Government is uh, keen to get as, uh, better, much better information as time goes on about uh, what costs are likely to be incurred in the rebuilding of Christchurch. Many of those costs will be uh, one-off costs and therefore more appropriately funded by higher debt in the short term. Uh, it's also likely that earthquake levies applying to all residential housing in Christchurch are likely to rise uh, significantly uh, f as the cost of EQC insurance rises. So at this early stage we believe there's two sources of funds are uh, uh, most, these are the two sources of funds that are the most appropriate way uh, to pay for uh, whatever outcomes the government has for the reconstruction of the earthquake. Materia today. Does he agree that a, a fair and balanced economic response would be one that raises a little more revenue from those who can afford it, adds a little more debt to, uh, to be shared over the medium term? and reprioritises infrastructure spending to where it's most needed at the moment. The Honourable Bill English. Uh, Mr Speaker, I think it is important we uh, achieve a fair and balanced response. Uh, the government, one of the reasons the government is reluctant to impose a new levy is simply that when the economy is uh, relatively flat uh, and the whole country would benefit from stronger economic growth, we wouldn't want to put in place a levy that is likely to uh, slow that process down. If there are uh, other less, um, if there are other ways we can fund it that don't affect directly the prospects of a stronger economic recovery, we would prefer to use those methods. Materia Tudor. Does he agree with Fran O'Sullivan, who argues that setting a levy at a high threshold? or by setting a levy at a high threshold, the additional tax is unlikely to affect economic growth, as currently high income earners are using their wealth to retire debt as opposed to consume. The Honourable Bill English. Uh, well, Mr Speaker, no, I don't necessarily agree with um, Fran O'Sullivan on quite a range of issues. Uh, what the government is doing here is, is, is going to ensure that um, we'll go through a process where EQC levies are likely to, to go up, and that would uh, be an appropriate, uh, appropriate measure uh, for and what it would affect every homeowner in New Zealand. Uh, and we uh, will be looking at the priorities for government spending across you know, over the next three or four years, something like 300 billion of spending. Um, and we believe those would be better ways of dealing with the increased debt, which inevitably will go with government funding of the earthquake. Materia today. Why does, why does the Minister today accept that growing government debt is better than raising revenue to pay for the earthquake damage, when before the election he used the size of government debt to justify the sale of state assets? The Honourable Bill English. No. Well, Mr Speaker, we've, this is a, a um, government that's always been reluctant to unnecessarily increase government debt. Uh, however, we're not uh, completely rigid about it. The fact is that we are going. To, we need to incur significant costs to support the people of Canterbury, uh, even in as basic terms as giving them cash in their pockets. You know, in these last couple of weeks, so that, so that they can live. Uh, we are committed to rebuilding Christchurch. Those are our top priorities. Uh, and if we have to incur some extra debt to achieve that, uh, then we're willing to do so. But over the next three or four years, we would need to um, we would need to reduce our debt levels because. We are a country that's still vulnerable with high levels of debt, and we don't want to increase that vulnerability. Materia today. Does he agree, if he doesn't agree with Fran O'Sullivan, does he agree with uh, Bernard Hickey, uh, that, who says that the fastest, fairest and safest way for New Zealand to save as a nation, given the Minister's concern about savings, and to use those savings to rebuild infrastructure, uh, is to impose an earthquake levy on those who can afford it. That is the most effective way to do that. The Honourable Bill English. Well, Mr Speaker, uh, no, and for similar reasons to uh, why I disagree with Fran O'Sullivan, who makes the same proposition. To you today. Does the Minister think or agree that an earthquake levy uh, is, a more, is more transparent 
than government spending cuts, and that it takes the politics out of the paying for the rebuild of Christchurch. The Honourable Bill English. Well, Mr Speaker, I think we can certainly achieve transparency um, for around the rebuilding of Christchurch to show uh, what public money is being spent uh, and where it comes from. That shouldn't be difficult at all. Materia Tudain. Who does the Minister think should fairly bear the cost of this, this disaster? Those who can afford to and who have said publicly and openly that they want to or those who are receiving government support, like Working for Families? The Honourable Bill English. Well, Mr Speaker, that will depend uh, to some extent on the decisions we make, but by and large you could expect the government to stick to its to the method it's used through the recession. Government spending has been tight, and that is to, that we will continue to protect the vulnerable, uh, to maintain frontline services, and to continue with a long-term investment in infrastructure uh, so that we can have a stronger growing economy. Because in the longer run, a stronger growing economy will uh, help the rebuilding of Christchurch and the reinvigoration of the rest of the country uh, more than any particular spending or taxing measure. Question number seven, Aaron Gilmore. Thank you, Mr. 